All right, so let's recap what we've previously discovered using Spark and those other open source tools. After analyzing the phone records data set, we now know that our friend Scott made phone call number one from Mandalay at 10.48 p.m. Then, shortly after that first call, call number two was made from the Las Vegas police station. And then, early the following morning, call number three was made from the detention center. So in other words, it somehow seems that our friend went to jail. And you know what? That sounds really weird to me. But if he did actually go, I wonder why and did he make bail? Well, let's analyze the local criminal record system and see if we can uncover any more clues. Now the question is, what open source tool should we use to analyze these records? Let's open up Ambari and take a look and see what we have that we can work with. Hmm. It looks like we have a lot of options here. Hmm, let's see. Why don't we use Hive for this? That's something I've experienced with. And you know what? I happen to have a few slides that we could take a quick look at too before we get to work. Let's quickly talk about what Hive is. It's a data warehouse system and it's built on top of Hadoop. The Hive documentation has the following quote. The Apache Hive data warehouse software facilitates reading, writing, and managing large data sets residing in distributed storage using SQL. Structure can be projected onto data already in storage. A command line tool and JDBC driver are provided to connect users to Hive. Now let me break it down for you. There's really three basic concepts here. First off, you need to tell Hive about your data. Hive uses a metastore to map contents of your data files to tabular form. It brings along databases, tables, and other familiar concepts into the Hadoop world. Second concept, you write queries. There's a SQL-like interface called HQL, stands for HiveQL, and that's for data stored in Hadoop. So SQL, it's a familiar, widely known syntax. Most people know how to use it, and it gives you that clear separation to finding the what you want versus how to get it. And the little quote I have is, I'll tell you what I want, you figure out how to make it happen. Third concept, Hive translates this HQL into MapReduce for you, and it now runs on Spark and Tez2. So these HQL queries, they get implicitly translated into MapReduce jobs for execution. And what that allows us to do is easily take advantage of Hadoop's distributed cluster processing power without really having to do anything too tricky. All right, let's take a look at Hive's components. So in the center, there's the Hive server, which is called Hive Server 2. It's a thrift server, and you can communicate with it using either a thrift client, an ODBC, or JDBC client. And one JDBC client of note is the Beeline command line interface. And that's kind of like Hive's official command line interface that you can use to submit DDL, DML, uh, you can manipulate metadata, and so on. Now, Hive has a driver, compiler, optimizer, executor, and there's also that Metastore, which by default is a Derby database, but it can also be MySQL or something else. And of course, Hive interacts with a Hadoop instance, which we've depicted in the bottom of this diagram. All right, one more slide before we start sleuthing. So Hive has this concept of a warehouse. And inside of the warehouse, you can have zero or more databases. Inside of a database, you can have zero or more tables. And then inside of a table, you can optionally have partitions and buckets. All right, so the cool thing about those concepts, databases, tables, partitions, the Hive warehouse, is that they're really just directories that are sitting in HDFS, also known as the Hadoop file system. Now on the left-hand side, let's take a look at an example. So on our virtual machine, our warehouse path is slash apps, slash Hive, slash warehouse. And the warehouse path, that's configurable. Now inside of that warehouse directory on HDFS, we have a database directory. And in this example, the database is called db1, and the directory is db1.db. Now inside of that database directory, then we have table directories. And in this example, the first table we have is tab1. Now inside of the tab1 directory, we actually have a data file, finally, right? This one's called tab1.dat. And that data file could be called anything. In this example, it just happens to be called .dat. Now, down below, we also have a partition table. And partitioning is a really cool concept that Hive um, has. Uh, and it basically allows you to speed up your queries by breaking your data into smaller partitions. And I'm not going to talk much about that right here, but it's something that you should definitely look into if you're going to be using Hive. 
Now back to solving the mystery. So in Ambari, we can see that the various Hive components that we need are started up. The Hive Metastore is started up, the Hive Server 2 is started up, the MySQL server that's used by the Metastore is started up. So we're ready to rock with Hive. But first, let's check out the various configs. So we'll click on the configs tab inside of Ambari for the Hive service. There's various settings we can see on this page. We'll click on the advanced tab. Then we can see all the good stuff here. We can see that the Hive Metastore is hosted on the bdd.wow server. It's a MySQL database that's being used for our Metastore. We can see the JDBC driver class, the database URL that's being used. We can see where WebHCAT is being run from. And then we can scroll down and look at uh, a whole bunch of other configs. Let's look for something interesting here. Ah, the hive.metastore.warehouse.dir. So that's where you can tell Hive where on HDFS you'd like the Hive warehouse directory to be. And in this example, it's slash app slash Hive slash warehouse, like we discussed previously. We see performance configs. And then there's a whole bunch of other configs that we could also tweak if we wanted to. Now, if you're working in the cloud, you're going to want to have hands-on experience working with notebooks. And on this image, we have Zeppelin notebooks installed. So why don't we start off using this to interact with Hive? So first, we're going to go into the interpreter settings. And we're going to make sure that the interpreters are set up so that we can actually interact with Hive. And the specific interpreter we're going to use is the JDBC interpreter. So we pull up that interpreter down there. And we can take a quick look at the settings that we've made in here. You can see under the Hive URL that we have things set up for our Hive server that's running on port 10,000. The Hive user is Hive and so on. So those settings are looking pretty good right now. We'll scroll down and we're going to see dependencies. And if you don't have these dependencies, I find that things are not going to work. So these are the dependencies we're using. Of course, you could use a different version of those listed jars, but that's the version we're using on this image. So now that those are all set up, we can go back to the main Zeppelin page. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a new notebook. So we go to create new note. We're going to give it a name. This one we're going to call BDD Hive Notebook. We're going to create that notebook and bam, there we are. We got our new notebook and now we can start doing some work. In this first paragraph, we're gonna go ahead and type in percent JDBC and then Hive in parentheses. And that tells the JDBC interpreter that we wanna use Hive here. We enter in a command, which is show databases here. And then we go and we click play on the paragraph and we get result back. And what we can see is the one default database in Hive. And that database, of course, is called default. All right, in the next paragraph, let's create a new database. So we'll put in the create database command. We're going to call our new database dudes db, and we'll put db as capital here. And what happens is that Hive will convert the name into lowercase. So let's check and make sure that our new database was actually created. We're going to put in show databases. We're going to run that. And there we go. We can see that our new database is actually in Hive now. Let's prove that the database directory was actually created over on HDFS. So in a Linux terminal, we're going to just su over to the Hive user. And then we're going to put in this command, Hadoop fs ls slash apps slash Hive slash warehouse. And we can see that, in fact, our dudesdb.db directory was created. All right, now let's take a look at what records we have to work with. So we acquired these Las Vegas criminal records, and we have two different files here. One's called Arrest Reason Lookup, and the other is called Las Vegas Arrest. So why don't we take a look at the Las Vegas Arrest file first? 
All right, some raw data. We can tell this is a common delimited file, but we could use some more metadata. Let's see what we got here. Ah, there we go, top secret. Okay, so the purpose of this file is that this table, it holds arrest records for the Las Vegas criminal arrest record system. Let's take a quick look at the different fields inside of this file. We have an ID field, an arrest timestamp, a name, an age, a gender, a height, a weight field, hair color, eye color, a charged with ID. And what that is, it's an ID that can be used to look up the reason the person was arrested. That field can contain multiple IDs delimited by the pipe character. We have a bail dollars field. We have a made bail field. In other words, did the person make bail and leave jail? Or are they still stuck in jail? And there's a released to field, which means who was the person released to after they made bail? Now, why don't we go and look at the other data file we have, the arrest reason lookup file. Let's see if we can get some metadata for this. There we go. So the purpose of this table is it's a lookup table that holds the different reasons that people have been arrested. And it's really simple. There's only two columns here. We have an ID column and a charge description. And the other table that we just looked at, it uses this table. If you look, you can see that there's some pretty crazy arrest reasons here. And these are all actually real arrest reasons from Las Vegas. Let's go back to Zeppelin and actually create a new hive table. So we'll go to a new paragraph. We'll put in the percent JDBC hive line, and then we're going to put in create table and we're going to name it Vegas underscore arrests. And now we're going to start listing the different fields of our table. So we have the ID column. We have the arrest underscore timestamp. It's going to be of type timestamp. We have the name column, which will be a string age, which we'll have as an int gender, a string height. That can be a string, weight, a string, hair color, a string, eye color, also a string, charged with ID. And that's going to be a little different. That's going to be an array of strings because we can have one or more charged with IDs associated with a single record. Bail dollars will be a decimal. Made bail will be a string. And released to will be a string. Now we're going to tell Hive a little bit more about our table. We're going to say row format delimited. And what that means is that our actual data is in delimited format. And we saw that it's delimited by commas. So we list fields terminated by comma. And then we have a collection item here, and it's that charged with ID, which is an array of strings. And we're going to tell Hive that our collection items are terminated by the pipe character. And then we say that this file is stored as a text file. And then we have one more piece that we need to stick in here. And that's table properties. And we're going to tell Hive that the first row in this data is actually table header metadata. And you know what? Let's do one more thing here. Let's put the database name in front of the table name just to make sure that Hive knows we want this table stuck in the dude's DB database. So we created the table. Let's just confirm that the table was in fact created. So we'll run the show tables command. And we can see that our table was in fact created. So now let's go to a new paragraph and let's do a, a describe extended of our table. And that will give us a bunch of metadata about our table. So we simply put in describe extended followed by our table name. And in this case, our table is called Vegas underscore arrests. We click play. And then Hive comes back to us with a whole bunch of metadata. We can see our columns. And then if we scroll down, we're going to see a whole bunch of in-depth data about our table. 
let's scroll over and look at one thing of interest here, and that's the location on HDFS of this table. And we can see that our table is over in HDFS down to slash apps, slash hive, slash warehouse, slash dudes db dot db path. Now let's check inside of HDFS and make sure that the directory for the table was actually created. So we do a ls, we can see that the Vegas arrest directory was in fact created down our slash apps, slash hive, slash warehouse, slash dudes db dot db directory. And now let's check inside of the Vegas underscore arrest directory and see what's in there. Okay, nothing's in there. And that makes perfect sense because we haven't actually loaded any data into our table yet. So we've been working with Zeppelin. Why don't we go and use Hive's beeline command line interface? So we navigate over into Hive's slash bin directory. We're going to start up beeline. Beeline starts up. And then what we need to do is we need to actually connect to our Hive server. And we do that with this line right here. And once we run that, We'll connect into our Hive server. We have a session started up, and now we can start typing in different commands and run SQL and more. So we do a quick show of databases. We can see our default databases there, our DudesDB databases there. We say use the DudesDB. Now show us the tables inside of that database, and we can see our Vegas underscore arrest table. And now what we're going to do is we're going to create that second table we need, that arrest underscore reason underscore lookup table. So we start putting in that command. We only have two columns to worry about for that whole table. So we put those in here. They're both going to be strings. We're going to describe that data file. It's a delimited file. The data is delimited by the comma. So we say fields terminated by comma. It's going to be stored as a text file versus a variety of other formats that we could store the data in. And then finally, we say that the first line of our data is header information. Now we run the show tables command, and we see that we have both our tables. Now we clear the screen, and we're going to actually load data into our table. So we put in load data local in path. So we're saying load data from our local file system, and that data is located in the following path which is slash opta slash Las Vegas underscore arrest dot CSV. And then we say overwrite into the Vegas underscore arrest table. There we go. Our table is now filled with data. And let's go over into HDFS and take a quick look to see what happened. So we do the Hadoop FS dash LS command. Let's take a peek at what's inside of our Vegas underscore arrest directory. And we can see that our CSV has been copied from our local file system into HDFS. Now, same thing for our other table. So we'll do the load data local in path. We put in the path to our arrest underscore reason underscore lookup file. We update the table to say arrest underscore reason underscore lookup. And there we go. We loaded that table of data. We'll double check that the data was in fact copied into our HDFS directory, and it was. Now let's actually run a query. We'll run a simple select all query. We're going to do a select all from the arrest underscore reason underscore lookup table. We're going to limit it to just 10 rows that we want returned. And there we go. We can see 10 rows of return in Hive. And one thing to note is that Hive didn't have to run any MapReduce for this query. It was just a very simple query that Hive could handle without having to do MapReduce. All right, so I think I've come up with a query that's going to help us find Scott. The query is select all from the Vegas arrest table, where the arrest timestamp is between the evening of October 23rd and the evening of October 24th. Also, we do know that Scott's hair color is brown and he's a male. So we're going to put those into the where clause here. And let's run this query. Let's zoom in on the results here. And we can see that only one record was returned. So this has to be our friend Scott. Now the ID of the record is 2974. And we can see that there's an arrest timestamp. There's a name, which seems like a fake name was given. The name Wolfpack is listed here. There's an age, a gender, a height, a weight, a hair color, an eye color. And all those seem to match up with uh, the description of our friend. 
We also can see that there is multiple charged with IDs. So this person was arrested for multiple reasons. We can see here that the person made bail for $5,299.82 and that they were released to the Purple Taxi Service. So now we know that our guy took a taxi and that's a really big clue that we just uncovered. Next, let's do a join of the two tables and find out why in the world our friend got arrested. Now, we know the ID for the arrest record of interest is 2974. So, we'll do a join between the two tables to get a list of the offenses that this person was charged with. And don't forget, folks, innocent until proven guilty, right? So, we kick off that query, and what's happening here is MapReduce is being run on Hadoop. So, all we had to do was write that little query, and now we can harness the power of a Hadoop cluster that easily. Oh my goodness. What in the world happened that night? Looks like somebody was allegedly very naughty. Wow, things got really exciting, didn't they? Well, if you're ready for the Hollywood ending, go ahead and click over here. But before you do that, I recommend that you click over here and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.